Morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I'm trying to make the camera straight, but it doesn't seem like it'll go straight. I have been told that I people don't want to see any more licking out the window videos. So, uh, based on popular request, I will not do so this morning. I just wanted to tell you some really exciting news this morning. I uh, insulated the forklift battery yesterday and um, Chris, white Chris, came over and helped and we put about two layers of fiberglass insulation around the sides and around the front and back, the, the long edges and about a foot of insulation on each side stuffed in cardboard boxes and about three or four layers on top and let me show you some exciting news here. All right, here's the temperatures: 72 in and 11 out. All right, 11 degrees out, and we've got averaging 10 mile an hour winds. Right now, it's just under uh, eight. Okay, and let's come on over here. Here's the exciting news: the um, battery voltage isn't very high but I think that'll change in a couple days. I have uh, rewired the entire system, so I think that's going to increase now. Look at the temperature, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. That is incredibly exciting, 39 degrees. So it's 11 out, 39 in the battery bank. So it's holding its heat. It was 46 last night when I last checked it. 46 degrees last night in the battery bank and it held it only lost seven degrees overnight so I can't wait to see where that temperature is going to be by the end of today after charging up all day and heating those batteries up this is really exciting so I am going to have serious rodent problem the mice are going to love it and they're going to rip that stuff to shreds so my biggest concern is trying to prevent them because that insulation attracts mice badly but hopefully this is going to help me to charge up these batteries and keep them charged the warmth I think once it's above 50 60 degrees is going to make a huge difference on the standing the standby voltage it's because I don't use the batteries at night I don't use anything from the forklift battery yet because of the low voltage after the sun goes down so I think that it's the temperature so I'm pretty sure that's the only thing that uh, that it can be now that is the actual battery voltage I know without a doubt because I rewired everything yesterday with new sense wires forgive me the um, network cable has to be neatly put in there and uh, zip tied on to the rest of the bunch but I threw that on last night so I can monitor the system but this is really good news, really exciting. It's partly sunny, right now it's 8.30 and obviously you can see shadows across the entire property. I just want to show you the update here. Pulling in 94 watts of power and the battery is still at 39 degrees. Uh, but sitting at 13 volts and the condition is on yellow so it's in an hour has come up from 12.2 resting overnight to 12.9 under charge with 100 watts and uh, that's really good for 8.30 in the morning early morning sunlight so the location of those solar panels up against the RV is probably the best place because it is catching the morning rays although it doesn't get the late afternoon rays so once I move the other solar panels I'll be really hooked up out here I think it's gonna be really good and that's gonna just keep increasing now it's 13 volts I'm anxious to see the temperature increase and see these batteries warm right up and then see if they retain a charge status overnight at rest I'm thinking they've been going down to 12.2 overnight because of the cold temperatures I guess we're gonna find out here in the next couple days 
Good afternoon, this is Troy and Baby Cat from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Sitting in the warm and cozy tiny house on wheels. I just want to show you, I was out at uh, Tractor Supply and I've got some uh, egg cartons for my fake eggs. And it says, Farm Fresh Eggs right on it. It's funny because I said that the other day, I said Farm Fresh Eggs in my video. So, I had to go and get some egg cartons. These are uh, 49 cents a piece. I'm hoping to find a cheaper source because the chickens are still laying four to five eggs a day. And uh, 50 cents a piece for a carton and you sell your eggs for about three, three and a half dollars. It's not much profit margin. When you count in food for chickens and everything else, cost of the chickens, feeding the chickens and care of the chickens, um, I don't know how people really make a lot of money on eggs, to be honest, but, well, I've got a whole mess of eggs, so I'm going to start packaging them up, at least so I don't break them, because they're all piled up in a box right now. So, baby cat, say hi. We've been uh, keeping warm in here. It is really frigid. We've got, I don't know what the wind chills are. But it's showing 7 mile an hour winds right now, but we have gusts around 30 mile an hour and still keeping it cozy inside, 77 degrees, and 12 out and dropping. Really cold. We'll go take a look at the batteries. Uh, voltage is dropping. The yellow light is on. And we're down to 12.9 volts. So, but 44 degrees. So the Battery temperature is rising. It will get warmer, but today was so windy it was horrible. So uh, there's, I'm surprised it didn't get colder throughout the day. Um, I'm about to fire up the computer. Let me turn on the modem and fire up the computer, and we'll go over in a minute and see what the total power input was for the day so far. Still bringing in 30 watts, but. It's pretty much reduced. Um, to be honest with you today, all I did was struggle to keep the house warm and take care of the animals and um, work on comments. It is brutally cold out there and there's debris flying all over outside. Um, I don't know if look out the back window you can see the debris little stuff but all the small particles of trees and junk all over the ground being uh, blasted around the wind by the wind so it's just not pleasant out there today at all so I'll be honest I didn't do a lot today sort of a relaxing day and uh, just trying to keep the house cozy uh, that was it today so far so far got a lot of things I've written down and planned I'm working on a survival bag I'll show you in a minute I have this field lines tactical survival bag and I think I'll set up the tripod to show you what I'm doing so far in here. Let me, we'll be right back. So I got this Field Lines bag a while ago, and I decided, see, I, 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 um, I call myself a prepper, but I have often been humbled by seeing what people carry around on their day-to-day -day, day -day basis. Now, granted, I do have a bug-out bag in my car. It is uh, complete with everything I could need for long-term survival and that stays in my car full-time permanently but um, my truck has nothing for example and what if I happen to be out with a truck and something happens some emergency some disaster whatever so that's not really very wise I do have in my normal clean jeans I have my um, Leatherman tool and a tiny pocket Leatherman so at least I always have a tool on hand but in my work pants I don't so and often I run into town with my work pants or go somewhere or do something and I don't have that on me so I uh, have really been thinking a lot about it often I'm out on the streets uh, with my church doing something activity somewhere often I'm just out and about whatever I'm doing wherever I am I want to be prepared and I've been considering something like this for a while so I finally started putting together a day carry this is my normal every day if I leave the house this is gonna go with me no matter what every day now first thing I've got here 
Well, there's this cool. See, this was a pistol bag, a pistol case, and this was a paddle, a removable padded pistol pouch in the middle of it. And I've got my tablet fits right in there, nice and neat. Slips right in there, really convenient. So there's that. That's that's really good. I have it with me. Now I'm still I'm still starting this out. I'm going to do a full video review on this later when I'm done. I just wanted to share you with you what I was spending the day on while it's so brutally cold outside. Working on my my day carry bag here a little. I've got a emergency blanket. Um, this has got really convenient pouches here. Anyway, if I can sit that open a little bit further. Really really convenient. See, there's a made. This is a pistol bag. Baby, stop. So there's convenient pouches for all of your your uh, magazines on both sides which makes it super super convenient as a organizer for your survival gear so I've got my pocket fisherman you guys have seen that on a uh, video review I did one time really cool little fishing pole I've got the uh, the reel as well I've got pen and pencil funny enough I had to use them last night I happen to be out in town I've got a knife just you know nothing spectacular I got that on sale at True Value once really good knife for a couple dollars baby stop you're really pushing baby come on you're pushing the camera off I got a LED flashlight really bright something I actually use every time I'm out and I'm coming home in winter I have to have this because it's so dark out here tissues uh, first aid kit this is all the like I said the pistol uh, magazine pouches. Got a cigarette lighter, a granola bar, got a um, multi uh, tool and silverware kit. So it's got a can opener, knife, fork, and spoon. And it's got another pouch that I haven't yet put anything on. I've got carabiners so I can put my water bottles on there if I'm on the road. Got uh, two pouches. Here's some hand warmers. Very important this time of year. Keep the hand warmers in your vehicle or with you at all times in case you get stranded. Very, very important. A lot of people get stranded and a car breaks down in the bad weather. Um, here's a survival brace that somebody sent me once. So I keep that with me now at all times. Got a survival kit and a can that I used to have in my backpack, which I wasn't carrying with me every day, unfortunately. Um, got some Coleman travel towels my mom got me for my birthday or it was a birthday or Christmas there's ten little tiny uh, towels in there and I'll do a review on them one day earplugs because I can't sleep well without if I'm in a if I'm here it's peaceful and quiet in the country but if I'm anywhere else forget it uh, strike anywhere matches and got some waterproof matches in a case with a ferro rod attached I've got a little wind up LED light, pretty cool. So I got a backup LED light, and then I've got a uh, little key ring with thermometer and compass and wind chill index indicator. Very important, actually. It tells you what you're really going to feel out there. And then I've got the miniature reel to the fishing pole that just screws on there, and you've got yourself a fishing reel, and it clips on the fishing pole. So again, this is just the beginning. I'm just starting to put this together and I'll be doing a full video on it later but I am carrying this with me now every day and everywhere I go baby you really so I take this with me everywhere now and it's my daily carry so I'll just show you what I've been up to figuring out what's gonna go in here and I've got a lot more going to add to it and it's not heavy at all it's got a convenient uh, shoulder strap so um, it's good so, it's the beginning. And that's what I've been up to today in this cold, cold weather out here at the off-grid homestead this winter. Well, it's getting dark out there. And I am analyzing the status of the last few days in the battery banks. Um, you can see here, follow my mouse along. Today I got 2,300 watts. Uh, put 160 amps into the batteries. I am running my DC generator right now because I'm still trying to figure out why the batteries drop down to about 12.3 volts after the sun goes down considering I've been putting a whole lot of current into those things. Now they're 750 amp hours 
So if you add all this up and consider I've been running my generator in the evenings when I use my laptop, that's a lot of current being put into them. Here, look at this, 4,000 watts the other day. That was so amazing. That was a full sunny day. Here I did a reset, been rewiring the, um, the electrical system in here. And here I did a, uh, there was a couple of resets in here. So this is all mix, mixed up. So this isn't full days here. This is all resets. Today was a, a full day, except I shut off the system for a minute. I was experimentally testing one set of panels and the other. And uh, I found out I get maximum power from both sets of panels at the same time. But only 2300 watts total today, 160 amps total for the entire day. Um, I did have, oh, no faults, but I did have an alarm. Now, what the alarm is, somebody told me you hover your mouse over, high array voltage current limit. So what surprises me is that it's saying my maximum voltage was 145. Average is 130, which is funny that it hit 145 on a cloudy day. But the charge controller it can handle 150 volts, so I don't know why it's saying that. And I certainly never hit anything over 800 watts of power. So it must be peaking out at higher voltage occasionally. So I might try, once my new diodes come in the mail, I might try three sets, uh, let me see, two sets of three solar panels and one set of two, and put the, other, uh, the set of two on a different charge controller, and see if that makes a difference, because the uh, it looks like the voltage is peaking out sometimes too high for the controller to handle so and these are 24 volt panels so they're really pumping out some high voltage at times anyway I'm guessing that's what that uh, is because I'm certainly not seeing too much current but just checking things out and sharing it with you as we go hopefully I'm gonna get these batteries fully topped off and in good condition and uh, we'll be using them like normal soon. If not, warm weather is on its way in a couple weeks. Well, I've got a lot of eggs here. Uh, I'm going to put my farm fresh eggs in the egg cartons. Get these at Tractor Supply, as I mentioned a little bit ago. Now, I'm not worried about color or... There's a feather on there. Not worried about color or size or shape or any weird thing. These are all natural and that's how they're going to stay. And uh, I'm putting in there halfway. I, I'm putting them in there halfway for me as much as for anything else. Because this box is overloaded. Now there's Baby Cat on the scene again. So I'm not concerned about any uh, color or anything like that. I will put the dirty, dirtier ones separate. Oh, well, there's a dozen eggs. That's averaging about um, three and a half dollars on the market. I've seen them as low as three, but I don't know how people make money like that because, hey baby, because the um, well the carton costs fifty cents, unless of course you recycle. But the carton's fifty cents, and you've got to start up somewhere, as I do here. And since I haven't been buying eggs in forever, well. Gotta start out there. But, uh, yeah, and then the chicken feed and everything adds up. It all costs money. But isn't that cool? Look at that. The real deal. Let me turn my display so I can see if I'm recording me. Oh, Baby Cat's on the camera again. Baby Cat is on the scene. Look, it's just, just like out of the grocery store. Look at that. The real deal, huh? One dozen farm fresh eggs. Now, I can say... I have farm fresh eggs. Why? Because the box says so. <laughs> so there's a dozen. A dozen eggs right there. Let's see what we have. I have no idea. Um, sadly, I have been losing a lot of eggs to the freeze. If I don't get out there in time, the chickens lay the eggs at any time of the day. They're, they vary. Most of them are in the morning, but still with sub-zero temperatures and the chickens lay their eggs in one chicken coop and then stay in another. So, well obviously because it's more comfy and cozy in the chicken coop they're not sleeping in. So that's that's convenient. Makes sense. 
But the thing is, the the eggs freeze on me if I don't get to them in time. There's a behemoth. Look at that. So, um, I've been losing about 50% of my eggs the last few days. Because we got this arctic chill going on right now. There's another dozen eggs. Two dozen eggs. Farm fresh eggs. So... Yeah, I keep losing them. That's another big one. Oh, look at that. See, that one's elongated. There's oddball. He doesn't even fit in there right. Yeah, there's oddball eggs. That's nat natural. This one's more rounder. Rounder? Is that a word? I figured I had f about 50 eggs. We'll see here in a few minutes. I have been eating eggs, eggs for breakfast, eggs for lunch, all natural, fresh, organic eggs. There's three dozen eggs. Okay, I was off by a little. Of course, I just had four eggs today. There's three dozen eggs, and I've got three, six, nine, twelve, there's a dozen. I had four dozen. Hey, I was off by two. If I hadn't eaten those for lunch, I'd have had it right. So where do we go? Three, three dozen eggs. Let's see if my uh, my friend needs a dozen. Maybe I'll get a couple dollars tonight. See if the landlady needs a dozen. Feels good. See that is the beginning of self-sufficiency. The beginning. It really, really is a good feeling to have this in my hand. <laughs> it's a start. The path to self-sufficiency here at the off-grid homestead. Yep, I'm getting there. Keep going. I'm going to be getting some more chickens this year. So hopefully I'll be having a lot more eggs coming up soon.